is happening, everybody? I'm John Ryan from IGN, joined by Tom Marks. Hello! And um, I had the super fun privilege to check out a bunch of Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Oh, man. Yeah. How many Greeks did you capture with your helmet? None. I captured no Greeks. I murdered a bunch of them with okay. swords. Well, that'll do. But not capturing them with a hat. <laughs> um, and it is super interesting. Um, so we can... First up, we're meeting uh, Alexios. He's one of the two new protagonists. The other is uh, Cassandra. Um, no huge differences, really, between the two of them that I'm aware of, aside from their gender. And um, and they're not, like, both characters in the world, like with the previous Assassin's Creed that had the No, the switch, it's not right? like Evie and Jacob. Y right. Um, this is a unique thing in Assassin's Creed where it's you're picking a character of either gender and you're them for the entire game. Right. Um, and so, you know, you pick one, you pick or the other, and then from then on, that is just who this person was in history. Right. Like, Layla Hassan from the first game comes back... Um, her like modern day story continues after the end of Origins, and uh, she finds basically one skeleton, and you just get to choose what that skeleton was. Right, uh, kind of a creepy way of putting it, but yes. That, yeah, yeah. I'm what with can you. I say? I'm a sociopath. Um, <laughs> so here we find ourselves in uh, Greece. It is four, roughly 430 BC, so about 400 years before the events of Assassin's Creed Origins. Um, which, which is maybe kind of surprising, seeing as Origins was the origin yeah, story. Yeah, you'd, you'd kind of think that, wouldn't you? But it's not. Um, I mean, so, it is. So what? what is the story here, then? So the story in Assassin's Creed Odyssey is the origins of, essentially, the conflict, the idea of the conflict between Chaos and Order, Templars, and the Brotherhood that eventually got established in Assassin's Creed Origins. Right. So, like, Origins set up the Brotherhood and the, like, quote, Assassin's Creed as we know it, this is sort of the kickoff to that whole event. Gotcha. Um, so yeah. we're not going to see any, uh, pro probably not going to see as much Assassin's imagery, that sort of stuff, in this game, because this isn't even dealing with the Assassin's Order or anything like right. that. Right, so I mean, we definitely get some of like the classic imagery, like the eagle is still very much a right, part of right. it. Um, you're actually, they call you... Um, the eagle bearing mystios with me, which means you're the 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 mercenary eagle or the okay. the like eagle for hire essentially. <laughs> um, so you play as uh, regardless of whoever you pick, you you play as this character who is um, they technically are a Spartan, but they don't they've like forsaken their nationality and their their birthright heritage and all that. Um, and they play you play as a mercenary. Basically, because you can see we're making uh, d questions, or we're not making questions, God. Um, E3 is a very tiring process for all of us. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> um, you're getting to choose your answers to questions, and you get to choose uh, paths and branching and, uh, options in the stories for the first time in Assassin's Creed game. They're kind of kicking into that uh, notion of it being a real role-playing game. We sort of saw that a little bit in Origins with, you know, the skill choices and the, and the trees that you could unlock, um, but now they're really, really leaning into it, and I think it could be really interesting. Um, what we saw of it in this demo was a lengthy, lengthy demo, um, and we get to make a few important choices that did have some unique effects throughout the story that we got to play through. Um, and, and so it's interesting because... It feels like Origins was almost the the entry drug for the RPG yeah. elements of Assassin's yeah, I mean, well, Creed, it, and it, now this is even going farther that direction. Yeah, and you can see, you know, you can obviously see uh, in a lot of the, the like combat and some of the navigation mechanics, and a lot of stylistically, it's very similar to Origins um, mm -hmm. in in the way that it looks, in the way that a bunch of its systems operate, um, and I think that's absolutely for the best. You know, obviously, I don't think. It's not something that I think we could say we didn't really expect whatever the next Assassin's Creed after Origins was going right. to be. Like, I don't think they would, like, introduce all these cool new combat systems and essentially this big shift to just a straight-up action-adventure exploration game uh, uh, coming off of instead of, like, just stealth-focused. Yeah. Um, and then have it, like, revert back. Uh -huh. And just a automatically go back. Like, just kidding, everybody. It's not this. Um, but this isn't even just kind of the next Origins. This is... It is. It goes a step farther. Yeah, I mean, it is a. It's. It's sort of like the next, the logical next step for what the game franchise as mm -hmm. a whole could look like. Um, I think. I think there was a little bit of a concern with some people that you know, okay, they took a year break from between the Assassin's Creeds, they revamped everything, they reduxed the formula with Origins, and now we're just going to get Origins again every year. Is like kind of the 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 fear, and this seems like that's not quite what they're doing. They are yeah, still changing things. Definitely, very much so. Um, you know, obviously, I can't speak to whatever 
the next one's going to be because this one isn't <laughs> even out yet. Um, but I mean, this definitely takes sort of the gr really good kernels of ideas that they sort of started and posited in Origins and take those and add their own stuff to it and they sort of elevate them a little bit. Um, so for example, all the way back to what we were talking about a hot second ago, like adding those RPG mechanics and those choices to it, um, you're, you know, I, I chose for my demo to play as Alexios. Um, like they're sort of taking that beyond just like the small individual story of Alexios or Cassandra, but also to the bigger world as a whole, um, allowing you to, you know, kind of lean into that mercenary role and you can choose uh, which side of the Peloponnesian War, which is when this is set, uh, you can choose who you want to fight for. So whether you want to fight for Athens or if you want to fight for the Spartans, you can sort of go to each area. Like this is the island of uh, Delos and Mykonos. And uh, for our demo, we played for the Spartans, but you could theoretically go there and be like, hey, Athenians, what's up? Let me crush this rebellion for you. Um, but your character is originally from Sparta. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's that thing of like, you know, the personal story is that you were a Spartan, but you sort of have like either lost or forsaken your birthright. Gotcha. Um, and now you exist independently of the conflict. Um, but that's, I feel like that's more of a, a, a reason for your, you know, your kick-ass warrior training. Right, right. Um, well, what I was trying to get at is also like, is is one of those sides renegade and one of them paragon? You know, is like, is there very clearly okay, a good gotcha, guy, I bad gotcha. guy in this situation? Um, I don't, on, on the like, global scale, I'm not sure. Because, mm -hmm. um, you know, I mean, that's kind of the, the fun thing about the Assassin's Creed games is kind of getting to sort of peer back into history and be like, oh, well, maybe these people who we've written as, you know, idealists and rebels and, and heroes into our history books, like, maybe they weren't as cool as we thought. <laughs> um, and, you know, I mean, there are a certain number of historical figures that do pop up in and around this, but, like, I don't necessarily know if one choice is good and one choice is bad. Right. Like, the, in our demo, clearly the guy who like runs the island of, of uh, Delos for the Athenians, he's a real bad dude. But that's also like the Athenians probably don't like him a whole lot. Uh -huh. um, he's just clearly like exploiting his connections with them to kind of make everyone else's lives miserable to his own means uh, to his own ends. Um, but yeah, I mean, so it's it's cool. I'm really curious to see how that sort of pans out. Uh, in the in the broader sense, because the the map itself is huge, it's like probably you know including all the ocean because boats are back. Boats, um, boats, yeah, we get our boats back. <laughs> um, because boats are back, you know, it's probably about a third to a half open sea, which I think is super cool. Like I really loved those moments in like Black Plague, for example, or even Assassin's Creed Rogue, when you're just kind of exploring the open ocean and, you know, getting into shenanigans with sharks and dolphins. Well, not dolphins in like Rogue, it was too cold, but there are dolphins in this one and they're really cute and they just fly by our boat and I'm like, oh my god! Uh, because I'm easily distracted by most things. <laughs> so it's bringing uh, back some of that Black Plague-ness where uh, Origins had very limited kind of structured boat sequences or, or boat yeah, fights, right? Right, and this is, this is, they're referring to it as, quote, seamless naval. Okay. Uh, naval combat. Like, well, it's like the in-studio term for it when they're referring to stuff right, like right, right. spreadsheets and business forms. But um, practically what that means is you can be running around on land, jump in a boat, go get in a boat fight, exactly. and then get off on a different island. Yeah, you, you have your own ship full of, um, you know, uh, warriors who you've sort of uh, hired or convinced to join you. Um, and that's not necessarily just like... It's not like in Black Flag when Edward would take over a ship, you could earn like two more notches on the number of guys you have on your crew. Uh -huh. Like in this, you actually can like run into characters and, you know, like, so there was one mission that I had where I had to assassinate three captains and one of them turned out to be a defector. And instead of murdering him, which I super easily could have done, I was like, you know what? No, I want to I wanna keep you around. You seem like a pretty useful and, like, resourceful guy. So, like, come work on my boat as an archer. And so now my boat has a better set of arrows. Um, so it's That like, sounds very RPG. Oh, it super is. Yeah, they're <laughs> really leaning into it very hard. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm really interested to see how that works in the broader sense. Like, you know, we saw a few different storylines um, kind of branch out and then come back together at, uh, in our little five-hour demo. Um, and so, you know, it's clear that they really are trying to lean into that notion of, like, you know, not only being able to explore history, but really, like, making it your playground. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and it's a really pretty playground <laughs> at that. It's, it's, but, like, look at it, though. Like, it's yeah. really, really nice looking. Um, like, I mean, Origins was a beautiful game to begin with, but I think, like, 
you know, aside from a, a couple of what I'll call early build hiccups, um, <laughs> well, you know, I mean, it's, we're still six months out from release. There are a couple of things in, uh, mostly in, like, some of the dialogues between characters, like... You know, so, some of the faces are a little... Uh, a little stiff. Yeah. A little stiff. Um, but, you know, I think that that's easily stuff that can be worked out between now and release. But, yeah, aside from that, like, I think this is easily, like, hands down, the prettiest Assassin's Creed game I've ever seen. Yeah, as far as I can tell, too. <laughs> like, not yeah. having played it, but just looking, it's, I mean, it's it's fairly clear how gorgeous it is. Yeah, I mean, like, the, the color palette that they've chosen, like, mm -hmm. you know, again, this is very, a very small portion of the map, but, like, seeing the, the blues and the reds and the purples and these really, really vibrant colors in what we sort of identify, you know, us living in 2018, we sort of only identify with it as black and white pictures in history books or, like, white marble statues. Right. And, you know, there's there's not many records of, like, what the, you know, somebody's actual house looked like in ancient Greece because a lot of it's either fallen to rubble or it's just, like, like all those giant statues and stuff, like, that they, they were painted and they weren't necessarily just big white rocks. Yeah, I'm really curious to see what other types of environments, because y you got to see a sizable amount of it, but, you know, even in Origins, it went to a lot of different places, a lot yeah. of different settings, and I I'm really interested to see what else this game has in store. Uh, because just, like, the desert for, you know, 80 hours will get boring if you're just in these beautiful Grecian right, vistas. Yeah. That's that's I mean, going to get tired, Look, too. these limestone hills are really pretty, but <laughs> enough of the limestone hills. <laughs> um, no, so the, the map itself is pretty huge i mean like i said it's it's roughly it's uh even though half of it's or a little bit less than half of its water like it is still larger than like origins for example it's the largest game that they've made they've said um and so i have to imagine that like you know a lot of it is these sort of grecian islands that are like off the south coast um and that were really really famous during you know the the time of heroes and the odyssey and um you know now in the in the post post age of heroes i guess you know after the events of like you know, leonidas at thermopylae and everything else which is actually what this story is sort of kickstarted by um so like the the conceit for this one is that your uh, the piece of eden in this game is actually a tool of yours and it is the uh spear that leonidas used at the battle of thermopylae at the one that everyone knows from 300 right um but so i'm sure we will get some extra uh, or some additional you know environments besides just beautiful limestone colorful islands um, so, so there was it's ancient greece but there were some rumors here and there that it might be mythological greece or like there might be stuff like that yeah so i mean i at first i didn't expect there to be a whole bunch of that and i still don't know like how much we're actually going to see of it um in our demo you could fight uh basically this giant ass bear uh that was uh callisto who's this bear of myth like basically she was a uh, nymph who got tricked into getting busy with Zeus and then Artemis got mad and turned into a bear anyways in this it was <laughs> less like that it was more so like the true to life version of that where it's just this big screw off bear that like ended up on this island because somebody was smuggling him um, but so while I initially thought that there wouldn't necessarily be like you know like a hydra or anything out in the ocean like the the, some of the, one of the screenshots that they released today was just a straight up Gorgon, like yeah, just like Medusa, just chilling. Snakehead lady with yeah. glowy eyes, and like she looks badass. <laughs> I mean, you know, I want to know who does her makeup because she is glowing. Um, oh no! But I'm, but like I'm now, I'm curious. Like, is that something? Like, is that like a post-launch thing that we'll see in DLC later? Like, sort of like the Trials of the Gods that we got for AC Origins. Yeah. Um, or is that? Can you just like straight up fight Medusa in the middle of the game now? I, they they like you said they played around with that in the DLC for Origins and I mean Assassin's Creed has always had a level of gods and myth to it yeah. right with all the Eden stuff but it would be interesting to see that done explicitly in the campaign based on this I mean we don't know if that's the case but like this screenshot is I mean it's surprising yeah like it's very much so plausible like and especially too like you know i can see them sort of leaning into that fun ish side of it like you know as Assassin's creed used to s i mean it's not that it's not serious and it's not that it used to be like dour or anything but it very much was a series that like took the concept of like exploring history very seriously mm -hmm. um and it's cool to see them playing with that if they are right um you know i mean especially sort of like in the winky nods to other media that has kind of explored that stuff in history like um, your main ability in 
combat, one of your main combat abilities is like straight up just like the kick from 300. Right. Um, where you just like wind up and you bash a dude in the chest with your foot and they go sailing back like 15 feet. You can actually see it in this big battle sequence, um, which is uh, another new thing for the series, I'm pretty sure. Um, these giant, like, massive clashes between forces. So like, because Just a huge scale fight. Yeah, but so because you're playing as a mercenary, your, your goal is ultimately to take control of all these different territories. Mm -hmm. um, and so you do that by not only, like, you know, weakening the infrastructure of whatever side you're trying to uh, antagonize uh, and killing the leaders, but you can also... Basically, you have, like, this is the battle for Delos. Like, mm -hmm. you, you rally your forces, you have them confront everybody else. Um, and then, you know, depending on how this plays out, if you win or if you lose, um, your faction or the enemy faction will get stronger. Um, and they have, like, their each side has, like, their own heroes and captains and lieutenants and stuff. Um, but so the combat in this is, is similar in, in a lot of ways to what was introduced in Origins. Um, it actually improved, in my mind... Um, it a lot, uh, you know. There's like an AOE attack which you can use to knock back a bunch of guys. Um, you've got the Spartan kick, which I mentioned a second ago. Um, you've also got uh, like a shield breaker attack, which you'll see a guy coming at you. Like a sword and shield combat was like the mainstay of warfare back in the day when you were on land. Um, you can, you know, rip a guy's shield off away from him, bash him with it. He'll fall back and take some damage. Um, and it's cool because like they've got a bunch of these different abilities that you can upgrade, and you can actually ch pick and choose which ones you want to have readily available to you in combat. So it's not necessarily like an Origins where you just have these like sort of passive skills, and some of them are active abilities that can get triggered or bonuses to that one super move that you have. Right. Um, you're really able to sort of create your own arsenal of or create your own combat style. Um, you know, if you want to try and play it sneakier, you know, for big battles like this, you're not really going to be able to be super sneaky. Um, but you can focus more on ranged combat, or you can focus more on up-close melee stuff. And again, that's another step closer towards just being a straight RPG, is yep. these activatable abilities that you upgrade and go on. Like, the Origins, when I saw the combat in Origins, I was like, oh man, they're kind of taking a lot of inspiration from The Witcher 3, and then I see this with the activatable abilities and these AoE attacks and stuff yeah. like that, it's like, oh, they're really, really going down that path now. Yeah, and I'm, and I'm really glad that they are. I think it's a, I think it's a smart and fun uh, choice for the franchise. You know, obviously yeah. we'll see how it pans out, um, but based on what I've seen, you know, I'm, I'm really, I'm feeling it. I'm very excited to see what this ends up being like. Cool. Cool, so thanks so much for joining us here. Uh, be sure to check out everything else we have on Assassin's Creed Odyssey right here on IGN.